Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the market site in Times Square, we have Michael Albanese, who's the CEO of Tradewind Markets, and we're going to take a look at blockchain and how it can improve gold and the precious metals markets. It's great to have you with us on set at market site. And it's really interesting. You come from a more traditional banking background from JP Morgan. Um, and now you're in blockchain and newer markets. Why the transition? Exactly. You know, it's incredible when you look at banking, when you look at capital markets, how many parallels there are between that traditional space and the blockchain space. So I spent a lot of my career in infrastructure, so how markets operate, uh, how assets are custodied, how they're traded, and some of the uh, shortcomings, some of the uh, frictions in those markets, either lack of liquidity, lack of proper title, lack of uh, access to data. And when you look at securities markets, I think there's a lot that uh, alternative asset markets can learn from those traditional securities markets. And so it's been great being on the ground to trade one for the past five months, just trying to take those lessons from the capital markets and apply them to the world of gold and silver and alternatives. And let's learn more about that blockchain. How can that improve the metals markets? In a lot of ways. So, you know, I think if you look at what we're doing at Tradewind, basically we're a financial technology company that makes it a lot uh, more cost efficient, a lot easier and a lot more secure to own and uh, deploy uh, precious metals as, as assets. And we do that in three ways via the blockchain. So number one, if you're a retail individual, you are faced with a couple of very daunting choices if you're trying to buy gold or silver products today. Unlike the stock and bond markets, it's not always as easy as just clicking on a button, going online, and buying your security. You have to figure out, do you want to take possession of your gold? Do you want to have it shipped to you? What form do you want to have it shipped in? With blockchain, what you're able to do is buy it digitally. You have uh, actual ownership records, which we maintain on our ledger. Those ownership records give you clear title, and that title is recognized by the government of Canada. The Royal Canadian Mint is where we hold our gold. So you have all of those underpinnings of a good, sound product. You know where it is, you know where it's located, and you have clear title and can take possession of it. So one aspect is security and surety of ownership. Second point, if you're an institution, you're also faced with a couple of uh, challenges today. So unlike stock and bond markets, gold and silver markets tend to be somewhat static in the sense that you have these pools of metal that are sitting on balance sheets. They're not necessarily turning over like stock and bond markets. They're not being lent, they're not being borrowed as rapidly and in as much volume as the securities markets are. So what we found interesting is that once you've got clear title, clear record on the ledger like ours, assets become much easier to deploy as collateral, to borrow, to sell, and lend against, and that's been quite exciting. And then the last thing, and I hope I don't sound too much like a naysayer, but I spent a lot of my career in banking, as you know, and a lot of that career was spent during financial crises of one sort or the other. And when you look at gold, silver, and other alternative assets, um, it will be very interesting for companies like us to help prepare the market for the next liquidity crisis. So what happens when people and institutions want to sell or exit some of their positions and alternatives? Will there be enough data? Hopefully, yes, on the blockchain. Will there be enough transparency about who holds what where? So we're looking for ways to make the next crisis, hopefully it will never come, uh, a lot more manageable for the market itself. So it sounds like it's just making it more simpler for markets obviously more secure way yes. to trade gold for sure. And that's what um, I think, you know, blockchain, not even with the technology that you see in trading, but even smart contracts and food distribution and logistics, it's a complete game changer. It's a real game changer. And I think uh, the one other thing that I would add to that game changing nature of it is transparency. You mm -hmm. know, transparency is not lost on me. It has become an overused buzzword over the past couple of years. So we like to think of it as transparency with a purpose. So think about, and I'll use an example from the gold market, think about uh, today in ESG fund. Mm -hmm. ESG conscious investing is thankfully becoming a lot more mainstream, but still you have asset managers that are doing a great job with ESG investing in the equities and bond side of the market, but are just really starting to scratch the surface when it comes to whether they're metals investments oh, or alternatives investments or ESG compliant. So wouldn't it be interesting if mm -hmm. very soon we are able to say that on our blockchain, a purchaser of metal is able to trace the provenance of that metal. What mine did it come from? Was it produced in a geography that meets compliance standards? Was it uh, produced in a geography that uh, signs up for the UN sustainable investing uh, criteria, for example? This is all becoming a reality, and it's something that we are helping uh, promote. So as a more well-known example, that could have stopped blood diamond 
Right? I mean, you, why would you invest in diamonds coming from a geography like that? That can completely change the gold landscape. I think diamonds is a great uh, example with the Kimberley process a few years yeah. back, and I think that's a real, really successful example. Um, gold, silver, other metals, and other assets, if we can apply those lessons from the Kimberley process to mm -hmm. other metals, I think it can be a game changer. And very, very shortly, uh, it will be a game changer, I'm happy to say. So we've been working for quite a while uh, on this functionality, and we're, we're very, very close to, um, uh, to making some... Uh, some interesting advances in this technology. Well, I look forward to covering that and having you back. Thank Excellent. you so much for joining us at MarketSite. Thank you, Jill. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.